Thank you, David and Yongbun. Their way of saying welcome is responding me back to the piano and the guitar. <laughs> There is something that every one of us, if you are a human being, you will be spending your life on this. I don't want you to guess because I don't want to waste time. <laughs> and the word is this. We have this thing in our lives. It's not once in a lifetime. Every one of us experience waiting. Turn. All your life, you will have experience of Waiting, you are waiting for something, you are waiting for someone, you are waiting for your vacation to come after your long season of work. Any young children here? Yes, we have students here, we have some students here. Students, I'm, I think you are waiting for your June holidays to come, right? <laughs> or you love your school days right now. <laughs> or maybe teachers, you are also waiting for your school holidays to come. <laughs> Some of you are waiting for big things. You're waiting for new jobs, new job opportunity. Some of you, you are waiting um, for a life partner. Some of you are waiting for your baby to come. Right? I, we have a few. This year is a very special year. Very fruitful. Some of you, you are waiting for healing. You are waiting for a breakthrough. You are waiting for reconciliation of a particular relationship in your life. It could be within your family. It could be with your friends. It could be something, someone, I, I can't think of anyone else besides friends and family. Anyone else that I left out? Or colleagues, maybe. There are some of you, you are waiting for some sort of a clear answer and direction from God. And I'm sure every one of us, we can relate with this idea of waiting. Especially those of you, if you are here, you were here on the first Sunday of 2024. Do you remember what happened in our church? We had encounter, not encounter, encounter was yesterday. We had empowering Sunday. And we gave everyone who was here to think about what you want to trust God for this year as we our church is trusting that God will make this year to be a year of restore, right? Every one of you, do you remember what you wrote? Because you don't have the card with you, it's with us. <laughs> and sorry, we can't give it back to you because you didn't write your name so we do not know which one is yours or so. So we trust that you will remember uh, what you have asked God for. And know this, the pastoral team are praying for you. But waiting is normal. Waiting is good at times, but a lot of times it feels very hard. We want to get out of that waiting moment. And, and it is hard also because, because of waiting, in the midst of waiting, you will find yourself, I will find myself started as, starting to ask ourselves, starting to ask myself, okay, am I ever going to get what I'm asking for? Am I ever going to receive what I'm waiting for? Am I going to ever get the breakthrough that I've asked for? Will I ever be healed? Will my relationship with this dear one be reconciled? Will I ever get out of this difficult and toxic situation? And sometimes in the waiting, if we are honest enough, we want to give up. And maybe some of you, you have sort of given up. But you know what, brothers and sisters, friends, there is good news. Can we give a applause here? We have good news. <laughs> Thank you for entertaining me. <laughs> there is good news. There is good news because sometimes in the midst of waiting, we feel demoralized. But there is good news. There is a kind of waiting which last weekend as I was praying and God gave me, and, and I trust that it was, God, it was from God to tell me that there is a kind of waiting that will reward us 
there's a kind of waiting that will keep us confident in the midst of waiting. Meaning, you don't have to wait until the end of your waiting, then you say, yeah, I have reward. You can receive reward even in the midst of waiting. And in the Christian context, we often call this waiting, this waiting upon God, waiting for God. Now, some, some of you, you might feel, well, what is this waiting upon God, waiting for God? What does that really look like? And if you are honest enough, some, you may not realize that every one of us, even if you are Christians, we might forget what waiting for God really looks like. Yesterday, there's a group of us at Encounter Weekend. Uh, we really, every one of us was waiting upon the Lord. But do we really understand what waiting upon God means? Bible is full of records of people who are waiting. Some were waiting well, some who don't. And we can learn a lot from them. I just want to talk about one person where you not only can see and learn and observe how he thinks, what goes through his mind, his internal process in his waiting. Because it's recorded in the Bible. And this person is none other than King David. King David. Uh, he wrote a lot of Psalms. A lot of Psalms are written by him. Uh, but I just want to talk about one particular Psalm, and that is Psalms 27. Now, give a bit of context because it's always good. Sometimes when we read the prayer and we wonder, what is he talking about? We don't understand, right? Now, we don't know when Psalms 27 was written, but if you were to understand King David's life, there's one word to describe about his life. And the word is danger. <laughs> Since youth, he fought with the beasts. He fought with giants. And then he even have to run away from his best friend's father for, because the father want to kill him. What kind of a friend's father, right? And, and he was a warrior king. He was involved in countless battles. But we, maybe many of you, you will know, King David was also best known as a man that's after God's own heart. So how does he wait with confidence? Can I just invite us to just stand together and read Psalms 20, 27? Let's stand to read God's Word. Okay, let's read together. Psalms 27, 1, 2, go. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of His sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me at His sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Saviour. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes. 
for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. And I will remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. May God bless the reading of his word. Please be seated. If you cannot remember today's lesson, I will give to you, just take Psalms 27 throughout the whole week and use it as your own prayer. But I want to offer us two things, what we can learn from David, what he did to wait with confidence. He did two things and this is what we can do. You speak and you seek. Let's do this. Say to your neighbor, say, you speak and you seek. You speak and you seek. Okay, then speak what? Seek what, right? We can speak about anything. We can seek about anything, right? Okay, so you speak. What do you speak? You speak of who God is over your life. David, King David did not begin dealing with his troubles by giving a self-talk, telling himself, okay, David, look, how many battles you've won while facing your current enemies. Okay, like you can wing it this time. You will still win. You won't get in trouble. You will stay alive. No, he didn't. He attributed knowing remem- as he remembered all his past battles, all his victories, was because of God who gave him the victories. And so he didn't f- praise that, okay, this is my accolades. I can be confident. And David, well, I do not know whether it was a self-talk moment, but certainly in the book of Psalms, We use Psalms as a prayer book. And in the ancient time, the people of Israel, they used Psalms as a song book. So you can imagine, wow, David was using the Psalms and singing it over himself. I was thinking maybe we can write a tune and write a new song for Psalms 27. Yeah, but but David was speaking and singing to remind himself to hold on to who God is so that his troubles will not have the power to speak over himself. Sounds familiar? If you remember, Pastor Ayan preached about this sermon called Moving Mountains. He taught us, right, from Jesus' teaching, every one of us, we have mountains. And the reality is sometimes we let the mountains speak to us. But Jesus taught us, Speak to the mountains. you got to speak to the mountains. And for David himself, he speak to the mountains, his own mountains, by speaking about who God is. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? And so David himself, he gave us an example of how he deals with his problems how he deals with the mountains in his life. He deals with it by singing out who God is. Because God is my light, he will lead me out of the darkness and despair. Because God is my salvation. And I want to thank David for choosing our David, not King David, for for choosing the song, The Lord is Our Salvation. If you want to listen to, go YouTube, go Spotify, search for this song, The Lord is my salvation. Sing that over your own life. The verses, the truth that is sung in the verses, it's it's from this. It's from this. The God of my life, the God is my salvation. No matter what, the situation that I will be in will never lead into eternal death. Maybe I'll die. King David may be saying, maybe I'll die. Maybe I will be tormented. But in the end, I will rise and be with God. My life is in God's hands. And because God is a stronghold of my life, He is so strong. Now, if you do not know what stronghold is, it's actually a picture, if you have been to European countries, the castles and all that. Stronghold has another word, fortress, tower. It's so tall that no enemies can come in. It's so strong and steady that no one can break in. 
And so King David saw and saw the Lord as his stronghold, as his fortress, as his strength. So why should he be afraid? Who should he be afraid? And so God, King David, began to speak or sing about who God is. You know, which that shapes him in his waiting. Let me repeat, David spoke or sing of who God is. And in that, it shapes him in his waiting. But you see, not only did he speak about who God is, he didn't say God is the light. God is the salvation. God is the stronghold. David says what? God is my light. God is my salvation. God is the stronghold of my life. He declared about who God is to himself. God is not just anybody's light. He's not just anybody's salvation. He's my. He's my light. He's my salvation. He is my stronghold. And I, and I felt that this is something that we need to tell to ourselves because I think that some of us, we see our brothers and sisters' life and sometimes we see, hey, brother and sister, wow, God seems to be doing a, God, a lot of good in your life. Good for you. God is good, but only to you, <laughs> not to me. Sometimes we might subconsciously think or feel that way. And so, but through King David's life, through King David's life, we know that there is good news. Anyone, everyone who has a personal relationship with God, where you can call God as your God, you can say to yourself, God is good to you too. God will be good to you too because He is your light. He is your salvation. He is your stronghold. And so if any one of you, if you have a personal relationship with God, you can wait with confidence. That's the first truth. Can you say to yourself, I can wait with confidence? A bit unsure. Huh? <laughs> you can do better. One, two, go. I can. Try one more time. Okay, we need to improve on our confidence. I hope as we go on, it will improve your confidence. So first thing, you speak. What do you speak of? You speak of who God is over your life. The second thing you do, you seek. Now, what do you seek? If you have Psalms 27 open to you, you will know that David was seeking a few things. And we can learn from him. God, he was seeking, and we can seek God in his presence. We can seek God's help, and we can seek God's guidance. Now, among these three, I want to talk very one thing that King David highlighted in a very different way. He said this in verse 4, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek. Now, it's very funny, right? King David says, some, uh, in, in, in verse 4, he says, one thing I ask from the Lord. But when you read through the rest of it, then you ask a lot of things. Eh? <laughs> you, you are ask, seeking God for many things. Eh? So what is this one thing? Yeah. A bit contradicting, right? Now, the, 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 the meaning of this one thing, when he say one thing, he's saying the utmost priority. The utmost priority in his heart, in King David's life, is that he wants to seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. King David's first priority is to seek to be in God's presence. He wants to behold God's glory and his beauty, not on the head level. Now again, remember, I, I, I share with us the fruit, discipleship is transformation and we do that by beholding and I said it's not about knowing more yes inquire to understand God but it does not it should not lie on a head level it, the King David asked to seek, seek 
and understand God so that it will touch his heart. King David wants to take time to gaze on the beauty of the Lord so that he can be have, he can have an encounter with God. And that was his desire. His life is not about his, his crown. His life was not about winning more battles. His life was to gaze on the beauty of the Lord. Now, the question is, why, why does King David want to make that as the utmost priority? As I reflect on this, I, I, I see it this way. Between David and God, it's not a transactional thing. If you remove that utmost priority, if you remove the point about him seeking God in his presence, then it's all transaction. David is just coming to God saying, oh, I need your help. Can you help me? I need your guidance. Can you guide me? That sounds transactional. But between David and God, it's relational. It's a personal relationship. And I want to say this, to wait upon God is to seek to know God personally in our waiting. Now, you're one, I do not know whether you're catching what I'm saying this, but as I was reflecting on this, I recalled a friend of mine. Uh, this was several years back. A friend of mine who was suffering in physical pain uh, for a very long season. And so as a friend, as I look at her suffering so much, is physical pain. Uh, all I could do is to pray, pray for God, him, heal her, pray for God's mercy to be upon her. Uh, and, and there are some of you who are perhaps experiencing physical pain as well. But as I recall, as I, uh, I visited her at her home along with another friend, we were just catching up because she was not able to leave the house. And, and I remembered, I will always remember what she shared in our conversation. She shared how much that in the midst of her pain, her physical pain, her suffering, that she came to experience and know God and understand Jesus' suffering even more. That is something I cannot understand, but I felt as she shared about it, that is something that, or what I can understand is she knows. Only she knows because she is in that midst of it, that she can understand and know God in that manner. She felt the closeness of being with God, being with Jesus in the midst of her suffering, in the midst of waiting. She didn't say, I finally know and understand God's heart after I, am healed, I was healed. No, she did not. It was in her waiting, she knew and know and understand who God is. Can you understand that? It was in her waiting, she grew to know God even deeper. You see, we like to remember and know God during our mountaintops. When the times when we say, yes, the victory has finally come. God has delivered me. Praise the Lord. God is good. He has healed me. Praise the Lord. We should do that, okay? We ought to do that. But my question to you and myself, how about the times when we are in the midst of waiting? How about the times when we are in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our sorrow, in the midst of our waiting, when sometimes we feel like we're losing? I want to appeal to you, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, come to God. You can cry out to Him. Why? You can. You can. You look through, if you use the Psalms as your guide, you will realize that David, King David, or other psalmists, they also cry out to God, God, why? So I'm not telling you, please don't come to God and ask Him why. You, please do that. If that's where you are, cry out to Him. Be honest with Him. He can take your honesty. He wants you to be vulnerable. 
He wants you to be vulnerable. Cry out to, to Him, why, in your waiting? But I want to appeal to you, would you go on asking two other questions? And that is, who? God, who are you? Who are you? As I go through this, in the midst of this waiting, who are you? I want to know you deeper. I want to experience you deeper in the midst of my waiting. Who are you, Lord? Lead me to know you and experience you even in the midst of waiting. Ask who. The third question to ask is what? What are you doing, Lord, in the midst of my pain? Show me. Teach me what you want me to do. So, why? That's the that's the whole thing that we will ask. Ask why. Continue to ask why. But ask also who. Who are you, Lord? Show me something I would never come to know if I was not in this. Show me who you are. And third, what are you doing? And what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to experience? Now, if you were to choose to want to seek God to know Him in your waiting in such a way, I will offer you three essential things that you need to keep in part of your seeking God in His presence. Now, today I got the youths to be the ones to teach us, uh, Samuel and Shanice, and I, I, had, I enjoy it a lot because it's like, wow, I wonder if they now understand how teachers feel. <laughs> But but I also enjoy about the, the things that they discover for themselves. And, and Samuel was the one who, who pointed out, how do you seek Jesus? I said, wow, you're taking my sermon pointers. <laughs> Three essentials. Uh, now, yesterday, those of you who were at the Encounter Weekend, you already got the experience of the package. Okay, so when you hear this, you will, you will see, ah, this is what it is. I experienced it yesterday. The first thing that you need to know to have is the Word of God. You need to have the Word of God. You cannot say you speak about who God is without the Word of God. You need the Word of God. The Word of God. You need the Spirit of God. That's the second essential. Because He is your teacher. He is your guide to all the truths. He will reveal things. He will convict your heart. No one is going to be able to convict your heart. Only the Holy Spirit. The Word of God says only the Holy Spirit has the one who will bring conviction to your heart. And third is you will need the people of God. Now, a lot of times we thought waiting upon God is like a private and a personal thing, right? Because every one of us, we wait for God for a personal agenda, right? Yes, you need to have your own personal private moment to wait upon God. There is a time for that. But yesterday, no, so, so I want to show us a few pictures. I uh, don't know whether you can see. Yeah, this, this is a time where the people who came, they spend their own personal time. <laughs> Someone said, oh, I didn't know I was taking a photo of. <laughs> Some, they were spending their own private and personal time with God. But then as we end off the encounter weekend, those of you who were able to stay back, we came together. We came and gathered together. And then as we were wrapping up our time, I do not know how those of you who were in the group, how you receive it, but I was just reflecting, I was receiving, I was hearing what was going on. I felt that it was a time of strengthening everyone of our faith. Even those of us who might have doubts even after the whole day of seeking God. I mean, it's the, I think for some of us, it's our first time doing this. And it was a time of strengthening each other and affirming what God was doing. No matter how small, how significant the time of their individual time was like. And because as we were listening, we were taking time to affirm, we were taking time to pray over what they have shared, and I realized, hey, that became, that became a space for God's Spirit to speak and work through one another. We need God's people. We need God's people when we 
our going through of our own personal waiting upon God. I want to invite us to just spend this moment to take time to respond. I just have two things. To wait upon God with confidence is that you got to speak, speak or sing about who God is over your life. Second is, you got to seek. You got to seek God in His presence. Not just to seek for His help, not just to seek Him for His guidance, but you seek Him because between you and God, He wants it to be a personal relationship. It's a personal relationship. It's not a transactional thing. And it's a simple truth that I want to bring it forth to all of you. I was struggling about what to preach this Sunday today because on originally there was some other text. But really, well, I, was really I was really learning to practice about what it means to wait upon God to double confirm. <laughs> really or not? Why is this? Why Psalms 27 just came to my heart? And again, this morning as I was praying, there is something that I believe the Lord wants to tell many of us today. He wants Psalms 27 to be preached today because He wants to enable you to wait with confidence. And I think there are many of you who do not know how to wait with confidence. He wants to encourage you today. And this is the response time. I want us to just close our eyes without seeing anyone beside you. Now, this is just between you and God. This is just between you and God. As you close your eyes, bow down your heads. To those of you, you have specific personal points in your life. You know you're waiting for God about something. You know the struggles that you're going through in the midst of your waiting. If that is you, if that is you, God is today and He wants to tell you, I want to enable you today to wait with confidence. God wants to tell you, I want to enable you to wait with confidence. While you are waiting to experience restoration, while you are waiting for God to lead you to experience the future that He has for you, God is saying to you, I want you to wait with confidence by waiting upon me, by speaking of who I am over your own life. I want to enable you to come and seek me. Make that as the utmost priority because that is where you will come to know who I am in your waiting. The more you know me, the more you can speak about me over your own life in your waiting. God wants to enable some of you or maybe many of you to wait with confidence. If that is you, would you stand with me? If that is you, that you, you, you know in your heart that I want to be enabled by God to wait with confidence. If you know that inside your heart, you say, I want to learn. I want to be enabled by God to wait with confidence. Then stand with me. And I want to invite those of you who are standing, eyes closed. It's not about anyone else. It's about you and God right now. Would you echo my prayer together? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom? Shall I be afraid? 
God, I thank you because you are my light, my salvation, and my stronghold. I want to receive your enabling by the Holy Spirit today. That I may wait with confidence. I want to seek your presence anew daily. I want to know you in my waiting. I want to know you, Jesus, in my waiting. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. I believe you will help me to understand your word. I believe you will grant me personal revelations. Give me discernment so that I do not get deceived. My confidence is placed on you, the one who will speak and the one who will enable me to hear. If there is anything in me, now as, as you pray this, pay attention. If there is anything in me that's hindering from me to fully experience you, remove them in the name of Jesus by filling me with your Holy Spirit. And so I declare anew today, I will be confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will wait for you as you strengthen me. Amen. Please be seated. Receive that by faith, my brothers and sisters. Now, this, there could be a few of you here as you listen and you know in your heart, it's like King David can say that God is my light, God is my salvation, God is my stronghold, but I don't have a personal relationship with God. And today is an invitation for you because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to try to be right with God in order to have a personal relationship with God. Jesus says, right, the moment, he, he, he says to anyone and everyone, follow me. He doesn't look at how well you have lived your life. He goes to the sinners. He goes to those who never even thought about following him. But the moment when Jesus says, follow me, the question is, would you want to follow him then? If that is you, if that is you, I want to invite you that even as we are singing later on, would you respond to God? Would you respond to God? And then there's a group of you, and I know, there's a group of you who are experiencing pain in your life in this season. It could be emotional pain. It could be physical pain. It could be any kinds of pain. And you have accumulated only disappointments and it feels that all you have from the Lord is un prayers. God wants to encourage you to continue to press in to seek His face. Now, instead of praying for you all, just as what we learned from Psalms 27, we're going to speak. We're going to speak over our lives about who God is by coming to Him in prayer, by come to him, coming to Him in songs and praise. So can I just invite uh, David and, and Yong Lun to just lead us? Uh, and, and let's sing this song, The Battle Belongs. The Battle Belongs. So can we just stand together? Uh, this one we'll show on later on. But we'll go to the lyrics, Battle Belongs. Can I just invite all of us to just stand?